Interestingly enough, I never thought of They Live being a genre in anything because I found it so relevant. There were so many underlying currents of truth. Look, lady, we're in trouble. The whole world's in trouble. They're all around us and we never knew it. But we all gotta right. stop them. All right, I'll do whatever you want. The whole premise to me of They Live, of, of the film, is it has been eternal. People have squashed people constantly, have thought that they were better, have demanded to be better, have said, you go away, you look like this, you're that. You can't believe in your God. You've got to believe in this God. We've got to do it this way. Well, I'm afraid of them. They say I have to do it that way. I mean, all in the name of what? All these things that um, break a spirit. It has been happening since the beginning of time, these issues on one scale or another, and it had built to the culmination until you know, John's artistry took over and gave it to us. It is a very intimate film. There's not a huge cast. The environment is a city and it could be any city. I mean, when I read the script, I thought I could be anywhere. When I arrived on the set, which, um, in my little honey wagon, which is a little dressing room, there was a bouquet of flowers and there was a note and this says a lot about Mr. Carpenter. And the note said, when it stops being fun, we stop doing it. I thought I killed you. I thought so too. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. Working with Roddy was a joy because his instincts are pure. And he was every man in that instance because he perhaps was new to acting, and yet he did have a professional appearance background, but playing Nada was perfection. It was just perfection. Just keep driving. Where am I going? You married. Yes? Please don't lie to me. When Holly encounters the character of Nada, there is a charm about him, regardless of the fact that she might be frightened as well. And she keeps drawing on her reserve. I mean, she's a bit of a powerhouse. I was to hit Roddy with what was called a sugar bottle. Every time I went to bonk him with it, it was very heavy, so I go bonk and it wouldn't break. You know, and then I go, go on and hit me. And I go, Bonk Carter and it wouldn't break. And he said, you just gotta let go with it, man. Take a look, I'll show you. Cut. Yeah. God damn, that was great. Uh, All right, Rod. I didn't think of her as a bad guy. She was doing what she did. She's an up and comer. And she's made her choices. Don't interfere, you can't win. Her loyalty is with them, obviously, with the they. Um, and she does want power and she does, you know, want to rise in the ladder and John and I stayed in the moment with it. Oh yes, now it's time to kill. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't think that it was bleak. I think that it was heroic. I think that it was epic. It's like our first responders that walked into 9-11. So many people of all ages live by that film. They changed their life. The other day I was walking my dogs and, and I was around some very tall apartment buildings. And from, you know, like a five story, you know, the fifth floor, I only know this because I turned, a man hollered out the window, they live! And I looked up and I said, yes, they do! I'm honest. 